Welcome to the Church of Obelis. Mm -hmm. My holiness deepens. By this time, we've all seen how strong Chen of Flame can be. It's been picked four times at the Cheng the Major so far, and it's won three out of those four games. Now you might say four games is not very much, maybe Chen is not just being picked very often. Well, the reason for that is that Chen is banned almost every game. And so Chen is just pretty much the number one hero in, at this major so far, the most uh, picked and banned. And in this game, we're going to see how we, can, how we can actually counter Chen offlane. As I said, three games won, one game lost, and this is this one game. This is the second game between Gambit and JStorm. And in the previous game, Gambit also picked Chen offlane and they completely stormed JStorm in a 15 minute game. The, I've also covered this, uh, this game on this channel. And here in the second game, Gambit has essentially picked the same draft again. All the heroes are the same except for their carry. Previous game they had uh, Void, now they have Juggernaut, who's probably even better with the strategy because Juggernaut is a hero that just comes online a bit quicker. And his healing, of course, is, is really, really strong in these kinds of push strategies. But JStorm, they have a counter to this Chen. And this is Enigma. So what Offlane Chen wants to do is he wants to take over the range groups at the start and use those for last hitting. Now, why do you do that? Some people are a bit confused about uh, the purposes of this. You know, doesn't it deny you a, a creep? Uh, doesn't it uh, push the wave? Well, yes, you do lose that one CS, but what you also get is you push in the wave. So if you're in the off lane, the natural equilibrium of that lane is pretty bad for you. So pushing in that lane is actually good for you. And um, so what we're going to see here in this game is that you just pick Enigma. What Enigma does is he can just instantly kill one of those creeps. So if Chen takes over a creep, then Enigma can just kill that creep. And this way Chen has denied himself the experience and the goal of that creep. And Enigma actually gets that golden experience. So it's sort of a double whammy against Chen. And... Enigma, of course, is going to outlast Sid and Chen with his Eidolons, uh, especially if Chen does not have a creep. So Chen actually just can't play this lane against Enigma. Um, so he goes down here, teleports down, and now he's got this range group, and now he's landing against Chaos Knight. And Chen versus Chaos Knight is a really good lane, because Chaos Knight can't really kill those creeps. These have 1000 HP, so you're not really killing those. And of course you have no AoE um, attacks on Chaos Knight. You have some little bit of AoE on, on Grimstroke, but it's just not enough to, to kill those 1000 HP creeps. And um, so what, what they've done here is they've put this, che this Chen originally in the safe lane as kind of a, um, a an attempt to bamboozle JStorm, because uh, JStorm probably expected them to put, him, put them in the, in, in the off lane. So... Um, they try to, to fake them out by putting Chen in the safe lane, but um, um, JStorm sort of uh, called this this uh, uh, this bluff, and they actually put Enigma up there. And now they can just uh, counter TPs with TPs, and they get this good uh, this good um, uh, mat lane matchups, and Chen is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And he could TP up there, but then Enigma can just buy another TP and also TP up there. Um, so Jen is just sort of left to awkwardly jungle here. And you can jungle here. This is, this is okay. You jungle reasonably quickly, but of course you don't really want to do that. And we even see a fear here just uh, sitting here sniping that creep. So Chen is really sad right now. And he's TPing top now. So you're up in this lane now. Um, the problem is just that this Chaos Knight is just ahead of you already. Yeah, look at the net worth. Chaos Knight has just 500 extra net worth on Chen. And level-wise, they're, they're pretty equal. So, you know, despite having this sort of counter of Enigma, Chen, Chen is still not doing that poorly. But like, his creeps are pretty low right now. And he's in, in risk of losing those. And it's just kind of kind of difficult uh, lane to be in. 
and Enigma meanwhile is uh, farming just fine and if worse comes to worse I can still TP him up there but this is completely fine this landing setup for for JSON right now and this channel often is really sort of meant to dominate this lane but now he's just sort of trying to play catch up and that's never what you want to do just look at the CS board right now this case and this 9 denies now 10 denies and 32 last hits and Chen he has 14 last hits and not a single deny this is just the problem if you don't get this good start on, on Chen you can fall behind and he's almost level 5 now but still quite a bit to go here and this Chaos Knight is uh, level 5 and a half, he's a full level ahead he has this treads whereas Chen still has his starting items and you just can't contest this uh, Chaos Knight at all here so Chen is just reduced to jungling and it's just a really miserable game right now for him but I mean he's still not in a terrible spot he's still kind of equal to this Enigma only slightly behind and um, this game is by no means over so right now it's 7 minutes and Chen still doesn't have his dominator and CK feels like he can just go, and he go here and get a kill but it is not so easily killed he also has the recall ability here which he doesn't even use right now and Chaos Knight is just he's just way too deep, deep in here, he used his ultimate and didn't really get anything. And now this this overextension by CK sort of allows uh, Chen to get a bit back into the game. And he's level six now. Um, he has enough for this Dominator now, and he's gonna get it soon. But of course, he's, he's off by like three minutes from the sort of timing you want to have as an offline Chen. And here they're collapsing on Chen, three versus one, and Chen is gonna die but he saves his creeps that's important there's no reason if, if you're gonna die save your creeps if, if they if obviously if you can sacrifice your creeps to save your hero that's usually preferable but uh, in this case there was just nothing to do so at least get some of the creeps it's very important not to just let your creeps die for no reason so chen now finally has his dominator and what does he do he goes here and takes over the set of tormentor um, you can't take this Sacro Summoner yet, he's not level 7, so he doesn't have level 4 Holy Persuasion yet. He just has to farm these creeps, and unfortunately, no good spawns here. He wants to get something like a Centaur here, um, that he can actually take over. But as it is, he just has to uh, farm these creeps, and um, he wants to get his level 7. It's very important to get this level 7 and Dominator reasonably early. That's sort of the the cool thing about uh, Core Chen, is that... This ability now actually scales really really well. Having this early level 5 and level 7 in Persuasion is really really strong. Because what they did to Persuasion is uh, they really nerfed the first two levels because you know, know only take uh, these low level creeps. But these higher levels of Persuasion are actually now a lot stronger than they used to be. Because you get this bonus damage and bonus movement speed. Um, they don't find Enigma here but um, that's okay at least they can p push him out of the way of the lane and um, pressure this tower now and you're very smartly here with rotating these creeps creeps have a ton of uh, healing here with the healing ward and just naturally with this aura and this aura and this aura so this is an easy tower here and um, from here on out Chen is almost level 7 now we're going to start taking some useful creeps this ghost uh, is also uh, a reasonably strong creep it's better than the uh, range creeps because it has more right click damage also this slow attack and yes, the central central is really good creep to get. So now at this stage, Chen just sort of wants to catch up a little bit. He has his dominator now, but he needs some some reasonable creeps as well. These range creeps are great for for farming the lane, but their piece of damage doesn't do very much against heroes. So you want to replace them with uh, stronger creeps like this, uh, the centaurs. The centaurs are uh, great at this stage of the game. The problem with the centaurs is that. It's quite hard to actually land this stomp, has a fairly short uh, AoE. But if you have some sort of setup stun, like so, you can land the stun and they can just chain stun someone to death. This Viper's had a really good game so far, but um, now 
he's really paying for this decision to buy this boots of travel it's the first item really greedy and that makes him an easy kill and so now gambit is sort of hitting their timing they have this chen with his dominator with his level seven and they have a really strong lineup right now and so they want to use this timing and make all sorts of things happen because they're not winning the late game against this lineup. Chen has now farmed his uh, Vlads. They also have Mech on the Shadow Fiend, taking some of these towers here. And now it's sort of go time for Gambit. Now they need to secure the map, they need to push down all the other towers, they need to secure Roche, and then they need to get high ground. That is the plan. I think pushing top lane, but meanwhile, in the middle, they're trying to defend on JSTORM, but this Viper unfortunately gets kicked straight into the whole lane of Gambit and just gets killed very easily. And with this healing ward up, uh, it's it's not going to happen to just uh, uh, gradually whittle down those creeps with these spells. Vampire goes in here, tries to get another kick in, but doesn't quite get it. Um, and here we see it trying to go for this army slash but doesn't work and he just has to you know, spin out of there. Jason want to make an aggressive play here right now and they find this earth spirit wandering into them and he gets uh, some of his abilities out but he's going to die regardless but Gambit do not want to give up this tower so easily so they're converging here and trying to defend this tower is quite low but um, they don't want to give it up and they try to go for the deny and Shadowfin actually gets it and now Enigma has been gone on with this uh, gen army pounding into him he gets his mech out but um, he dies and you see some of the strength of this uh, Enigma all this uh, damage flying out from uh, Midnight Pass is seriously killing those Chen creeps and now we see this fight, heroes dying on both sides and it's not quite clear he's winning here. Kaysner tries to get out here and he managed to do so and with this fight over now we can uh, take a look at the fight recap and we see that Jason actually came out slightly ahead in this fight so even though they were the ones who had to retreat it was actually very much okay for them and Gambit are now going for a little bit of a risky play here maybe they're going to go just straight into Roshan even though the entire enemy team is up, even though they have the ultimates um, this phantasm is down but they still have uh, black hole and this Roshan doesn't fall all that quickly they do have these chain creeps, they do have medallion, please use it, thank you and they also only have level 1 in penitence and they're not really using that either so this Roshan takes a while, but there's no real reaction from JSTORM, and so Gamma can just easily take this. And now is the peak of their strength. They do have this Juggernaut, who's still really waiting to finish his Mjolnir, but it's gonna be there soon. And this Chen is pretty much at the peak of his strength. Sure, these talents later on are really strong, but you're not really banking on these late game talents as Chen, especially on a lineup like this, where you have the Shadow Fiend going for this very aggressive build with Guardian Greaves rush into BKB, and this lineup is sort of meant to take high ground in around like 20 minutes. So they're taking down this tower, they have this nice creep army with uh, four claw creeps and this uh, center conqueror um, from the dominator. Problem is they only have this one creep wave and this creep wave is gonna die very soon and then the next wave is all the way up here. They're trying to do some so something here but it's just not really happening. They can try these sorts of plays because they have a lot of region, they have this healing war, they have this uh, Greaves, they have all these auras from Chen. But now they're sort of feeling under pressure, they feel like they have to make a play here. And 
They jump in with this Earth Spirit here, they try to go for this dive, but it just doesn't work out at all. They had their timing, but they tried to push it um, beyond the breaking point, and yeah, they just get team wipe here, and they only get one kill in return. No buybacks used here. This is just a clean team vibe. And from this point on, Gambit is basically out of the game. This game is going to go on for another 10 or 15 minutes, but from here on out, it's basically just like a long death animation that Gambit is going through. They're going to try again to push, and it's also going to fail. Yeah, that, that's just the problem. They had this high ground push. They were pushing into a fortified tower. They were fighting uh, behind the tier 3 against the team with an enigma. That's just not going to work. And they didn't need to ha do this. They could have just backed off. The Aegis was still uh, good for another minute or two. And they could have pushed a bit later. But they just decided to force it and it didn't work out. Now, I don't want you to get this r the wrong idea. I don't want you to think that uh, this gen often is uh, like just an early game hero and you just have to do this 20-minute uh, death push. You can do the 20-minute death push. It can work really well, like in the previous game where they finished it by 15 minutes. But you can also go for different lineups. You can go for more late game-oriented lineups like we saw. Alliance do one game in the group stage where they picked uh, Drow and Gyrocopter with Chen as the third core. And that kind of lineup you can obviously uh, go a lot later. Because Chen is not, it's not terrible as, a, as in the late game. His talents are very strong and he's not a hero that scales really well by himself, but he's a really good uh, sort of supportive kind of offlaner who buys all the aura items, all the utility items and can still contribute a lot to his team in the late game. If you get to level 25, you can get plus 5 persuasion units, and that just means you can get even more cloak creeps. And if you have like, you know, 6 or 7 of these cloak creeps up, you just practice really, really well against magic damage. So, why is this Enigma such a good counter? Well, first of all, of course, it's it's laning phase. We talked about that. This... Um, the mirror co conversion, really good against the Shen creeps. Um, and then of course later you have this Midnight Pulse, you have this uh, this Black Hole, you have all this uh, pure damage, that's AoE, and that's really hard for Chen to play against. Um, because the Chen, you, the creeps sort of, you walk in kind of slowly and that just gives you such easy setups for, for Black Hole. You really have to, to watch out for that. And even in the later game, you can use this demonic conversion in fights against Chen to take over some valuable creep. And this only works against creeps at level 4 and lower, which means you can take over all the creeps that Chen gets uh, at the level 1 and 2 conversion. But um, later on, things like Centaurs and uh, Hellbear Smashers cannot be taken over with demonic conversion. But the good thing is that in the middle and late game, the strongest creeps are actually usually the lower level creeps. Things like the Alpha Wolf, the uh, Little Centaur, and the regular Hellbear, the Cloak Creeps, as well as the Ogre Frost Mage. These are all level 4 or lower, so you can take uh, kill all these creeps uh, with the Mono Conversion. It doesn't have the, the biggest of ranges, so uh, kind of hard to get off in, in team fights, but still it's something to watch out for. Uh, so Enigma is, is a really good counter against Chen. Basically you can't lane against this Enigma. Uh, what are some other heroes you can pick against a Gen offlane? Well, one possibility, of course, is Crystal Maiden with her uh, Frostbite. You could, we have to skill Frostbite, level 1, and you can just Frostbite the range creep and kill it. It's not as reliable as the conversion because um, Chen can still deny that creep, and Chen can also deny that creep by taking over another creep uh, if he has the cooldown for that. Um, Another possibility would be uh, Potom, Mirana, uh, her arrow can one-shot creeps, but of course you can dodge this arrow, so it's also not as reliable. Another thing you can pick against uh, offlane Chen is Bristleback. Bristleback lanes quite well against Chen, and um, as soon as you get a couple of levels in your quill spray, Chen can't really stay in this lane anymore. And Chen wants to hit this uh, timing when he's level 5 and has this uh, Dominator, 
and push down your tower, but against Bristleback, that's just never going to happen. And we saw in that game that um, so the three on that Chen has had to sort of abandon the lane and mostly jungle and uh, give up his tier 1 tower. And that's not what you want to happen as Chen. Now they still end up winning that game, and that just sort of sh shows you how strong offline Chen is right now. Because even if you don't get this very early timing, you can still just farm so, so quickly. And you can see, even though Gambit are losing this game right now, Chen is still has more net worth than his Enigma. And Enigma is also not a, a hero that, that farms that slowly. The Chen, a hero that can hit this early timing, but also can farm quite well. Another thing you can uh, pick against Chen is to, to look more at, at the sort of mid and late game. It's just heroes that do physical or pure AoE damage. Nemo of course falls into that category, as does Bristleback with his quills. There's other heroes like uh, Kunkka or uh, Swen, who just do a lot of AoE damage, physical or, or pure, that you can't get cloak creeps against that and it's difficult for chain creeps to really do much against those heroes but of course you can still uh, stay far back with your cloak creeps and the other aura creeps and provide those auras which is of course what chen wants to do in the later stages of the game so these heroes are not as reliable counters as the ones i talked about before so really i think enigma really is like the number one counter against um, chen offlane but as you saw in this game this was not an easy game for J Storm, this, despite having this counter pick with the Enigma. And um, this, this push from Gambit could have easily ended the game, but they got a bit impatient there and uh, dove into tier 3 towers against Spectre Protection, against the Enigma, and that just didn't work out for them. So, this is the end of the game. Um, after this game ended, in the third game, a Gambit banned Enigma in the first phase. As a response, J Storm banned Chen, and J Storm ended up winning that series. So there you have it. This is how we counter Chen offlane. But even if you pick those counters, it's by no means an easy game. As Chen, whether he be played in the offlane or position 5, is just a really strong hero right now, especially in the pro scene. So if you like playing Chen, do it now before it gets nerfed in the upcoming patch after this major. And to help you with that, I have various other videos on this channel uh, discussing how to play Chen, both in the position 3 and position 5 role. Coming up on this channel is going to be a, a micro guide. I'm going to discuss um, uh, settings, I'm going to discuss hotkeys, and uh, just general you know, tips and tricks on how to uh, control your creeps as Chen. And if you want, don't want to miss that, please join the fold and subscribe to this channel and ring the little bell button so you get notified when I post the next video. Until next time, goodbye and may Obelisk protect you.